Hi, welcome to another day of the 180 day idea machine challenge and the topic of today is 10 ways to surprise a friend or a loved one. Of course, ways that they would like, right? So, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Florian and this is one, another, one additional day in uh, a 180 day challenge. So I post every day a video and every day it's about 10 ideas to any given topic. I've had topics from aromatherapy to better sleep and they are all taken from the book um, Become an Idea Machine by Claudia Azula Altucher. And this is another day. Um, today it's about giving affection, right? Um, today is about our emotional health. And if you think, think about ways to surprise somebody else, um, it reminds me back of this uh, one book, The Five Languages of Love, or The Five Love Languages by Paul Ch uh, Chapman. And I talked about that in, that, in another day, um, but essentially the core remains the same. Basically everybody has different ways of expressing themselves. Um, Every way has different different avenues to show their affection. Some people give gifts. Some people, uh, and they like to receive gifts. Normally, it's, it goes both directions. People that give gifts are often like like to receive them as well. Um, then you have people that like to receive praise. That's their language of love, um, being praised. Or some people do acts of kindness. You know, they do somebody else a favor. Um, other people will uh, will employ physical um, physical interaction, touch. Those are the people that that pat each other on the back and that always shake hands and sometimes they like box you in the stomach, and so that's physical affection. And then number five are people that take take and give quality time. So people don't always communicate what they like, and. That is not something that people should learn how to express themselves. People do express themselves, but like the majority of, of language is non-verbal. The majority of communication does not happen via words. Um, so you need to know how to read how to read your friends, and over time you'll know better what your friends like. But like me, you won't know which language they really they really. Are really speaking figuratively right or you never thought about that I certainly never did before I, before I came across that book um, but you know if someone always is ready to give gifts and is really enthusiastically happy about receiving gifts then that may be the best avenue to reach someone when you when you want to surprise someone right and someone who really likes to be praised you know, that will be someone who really mentions other people in very positive light, but also, like, has a smile when somebody else praises them. And so on. You can you can observe the other person, and then you can realize what that person's love language is, right? And, and based on that, I have written down 10 ideas now in the corresponding blog post to this video that are, like, two of each category, right? So... For example, the first one is um, the category if somebody um, enjoys uh, having favors done, then you could take over small errands. For example, um, imagine your spouse has left, uh, has like a DVD she has to bring back the next morning and you notice that the DVD lays there on the table and you just take it with you because you know you stop by the video store, bring the DVD back, then call her on your cell phone and say, you don't need to do that anymore. I already took the DVD for you. And she will, she will be super happy. Right? That's, that's one errand. Just observe the other person around you. You'll, you'll realize when they have some, some errands they have to do and they maybe don't get to them. Um, and the second idea is taking care of a larger project. That's not an errand anymore. That's something that the other person never ever gets to. Right. So, for example, um, a girl I dated once, she had a huge amount of photos on her hard drive. 
and then the hard drive broke and she was her opinion was you can't do anything anymore the hard drive is broken and when I asked why it was like yeah the controller is broken and I thought well if the controller is broken then you probably can use can hook the hard drive itself still up to a computer and let the computer drive the hard drive right it's, you can, can get the data off put it to the new hard drive and she was very skeptical so I just took the hard drive and um, gave it to the computer department at the university I was working at that time and I was spending an afternoon with them and they were kind enough to take care of it for me and we saved we salvaged the hard drive right so she got back all her data and she was super happy and alone she would have never, in contrast to the DVD, which she would have taken herself if I hadn't done it, the, uh, the, the hard drive, she would, have never, she would have never taken care of herself. She would have always had these photos. She never got to it, and they, she would have regarded them as being gone. Right? So I prevented that. So that's, that's, these are two, two things you can do. You can surprise a loved one with when, when he or she prefers acts of kindness. Number, th number three is for people that, that enjoy physical touch. If you just hug someone, just like that, just, just out of nowhere, they are super happy. You got to be careful if your spouse is against public displays of affection, right? So you don't want to do it in front of everyone. But at home, just like out of the blue, just, just a random hug and, and they'll be super happy. Um, and also, um, according to James Altucher, if you hug someone for... Oh, I don't know, nine seconds, I think, then endorphins start being, uh, um, being released from your, from your brain, and that makes you happy as well. Number four, still in the realm of touching, um, spontaneous sex. Of course, surprise, but still, I mean, uh, even after a long while of being together, just seduce her as a complete surprise. Trying out some new techniques or whatever comes to your mind, right? Um... If you want to know, if you want to get some good insight on what women actually fantasize about, I recommend Nancy Friday's My Secret Garden. It's quite an eye opener, and it's a, uh, uh, it's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit more fundamental than um, Fifty Shades of Grey. That's lemonade against that. I mean, really. So, My Secret Garden, Nancy Friday, and it's quite an eye opener what what uh, what women fantasize about. So. I don't know the equivalent for men. If you're a woman listening to that, I can't help you there. But um, but my secret garden is a is a pretty fun read actually, and uh, yeah, and uh, you'll be surprised. Number five, um, for someone who values time, it's a complete day just for your wife and or your kids if you have a family, right? So um, my mom did that for me when I was younger. She would just come up with a Florian day. So she would have just a day that would be entirely devoted to me. So I could choose whatever I wanted there. And that was great. I felt completely appreciated. And that's how she expresses herself, with giving quality time. It's typical for her. And for some people, they, they like to do give quality time. And it's also good for people that like to receive quality time. Right? Complete day just devoted for your, for your significant other. You know? And then number six is... Just listen when someone is down. If someone is, is like, uh, someone is like, maybe someone is down or, or is completely um, exhausted from work or, you know, hasn't smiled in a while, you just, uh, you just offer the person a coffee and um, just or tea and just sit down and listen to them. They'll appreciate the quality time to take for them and they'll be more than happy to give. By the way, you recognize people that like to give quality time by, by if they are talking to you and they never make any attempts to go back to what they were doing before, then they like quality time. That's very that that's it's very obvious when you meet such a person. They cannot they cannot stop hanging out and talking, and it's not laziness. Um, they're actively engaged with you, and uh, they like to give quality time, and they just find giving quality time, quality time is even more important than, than their normal work, right? I mean, not on the long run, but from a day-to-day -day perspective. If you have someone who likes gifts, 
uh, like your girlfriend, then you could give her a whole day in the spa, or your wife, a whole day in the spa, just for her. Or a whole day with anything else, right? Just some, just something, just some, something extra you give to her. And, um, yeah, that's, that's uh, suggestion number seven. Number eight is still the realm of giving gifts. It's fulfilling long-forgotten wishes. That's my favorite. So people say all the time, oh, I wish, I wish I, I would already buy this CD. I wish I was already, um, I had this book in the past, but we lost it. And I wanted to read this book so often, but it's gone. I can't find it anymore. Okay, so the minute they say it, they have forgotten already about it. And they will tell you two weeks later, they wish they had found that book. You know, you know people like that? I myself am one of those. Um, and so what you do is you you write down on a little notepad what the other person has said. And then for their birthday or just for a special day, you give them that book or I wish I had this CD and give them that. That will com com that will be completely out of left field and they will be super happy because they really enjoy having it, because after all, they always mention that they want to get it, but they never do. Um, so they want to have that, and they are surprised. You totally hit their nerve. Something that they had forgotten about themselves. So they'll see like, oh, he got that book for me. Oh, I can't believe. Yay, that's the book. Ah, oh, you know what? We lost the book. When we move, we lost the book, he would tell you. We lost the book. And now, now it's great. How could you, could you, can you read my thoughts? Can you read my mind? No, but you can be, you, you are, you are observant and listen and write it down what other people say, right? So that's, uh, that's my suggestion number eight for someone who likes gifts. Fulfilling long forgotten wishes. And then for the last two are for people that like praise a lot. Um, I fall into that category, um, other people, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a normal normal distribution. I think you have these five different uh, love language personalities uh, pretty evenly spread out a whole, amongst the whole population. And so some people clearly like to get praised. Um, in fact, the worst thing you could do to me, if you want to, if you want to pull a fast one on me, is to completely ignore me. That's, I, that's the one thing I'm not really calm about if people completely ignore me, like doing the opposite of praise to me, that doesn't feel good. So praise is really the language that that I that I um, that I use and that, that I enjoy. So um, one thing is spontaneous direct praise, right? So I remember a friend of mine. We were just on our way to Burger King, I think, it was like ten years back. And since I play cello, I have a pretty good pretty good memory of music, of classical music, melodies, I remember. And he said out of the blue that he thought um, I was good in remembering melodies. And I felt flattered. And that was good. So he just praised me for something that, you know, something that also came completely out of the blue. He had observed that and he praised me for that. And I was happy with that. So if you have somebody, if you have a personality that likes to be praised and you want to do your friend a favor, then just be observant, see what they're good at, and then tell them that back to them, that you really like how they handled their public speech, like that really think that they were a good public speaker. Public, public speaker. Um, if you mention that, you make someone who likes praise very happy, right? Um, and... On the second part here, you praise someone to his or her peers. Imagine you are on a work function, maybe you accompany your spouse or your friend, and um, then you talk to talk to another friend of his, or maybe even his boss, or something like that, right? So you talk to another person, and then you just mention uh, that some observation that you had uh, about something that happened two years ago, right? Where where you thought we think that your friend did a great job. You just mention that to his boss when you stand there, and that has a great effect. First of all, it will probably help him because if you if somebody is 
if somebody is praised by someone, somebody else, that's a pretty powerful referral. But also the person, your friend, who you praise that way, um, will appreciate it a lot because, you know, you can imagine that if you talk to your boss and you bring a friend along and then you instruct your friend to say something to praise you, right? It's, it's like, it's very obvious to the boss that, that, you know, that the friend is there to praise him and to talk, to talk, to talk you up to him, right? And then the boss may not trust it so well. But if, if your boss talks to you and your friend brings up some detail that happened, I don't know, three years ago, that's completely organic. So that's much more trustworthy compliment and praise that you can, that you can level to someone, right? So, so that's a, that's, and that makes, makes your friend really happy. So that would, be, um, that would be praise someone to his or her peers, number 10. And here we are. Those are 10 ways to make somebody um, to, to surprise a friend or loved one in a way that they will enjoy, right? Let's recap that. One, take over small errands. Two, take care of a large project for them. Three, hugging someone just like that. Number four, spontaneous sex. Number five, a complete day just for your friend or for your wife, your spouse, your kids. Number six, just listen when someone is down. Number seven, getting your girlfriend or wife a whole day in the spa or any other day just for them. Uh, just getting them out to a nice event. Number eight, fulfilling long forgotten wishes. This is where you just, uh, where you write down whatever people say and then buy them something based on that for, for the next birthday. Number nine, um, spontaneous direct praise to the person. And then number 10 is praise someone to his or her peers. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can use some of the suggestions I made for yourself. Do let me know. I'm curious to hear your stories. And if you enjoyed this video, click on like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'm answering every comment and every... Um, and every uh, and, and every question you have, either on the YouTube or on my corresponding blog article. So long. I wish you a great start into the weekend. Actually, yeah, maybe we are at hump day, right? So the wait week is halfway where it's Wednesday today. So wish you a nice second half of the week. However, it is. I'll I'm looking forward to welcoming you again tomorrow, and um, I say all the best. And see you tomorrow. Bye.